Now back in the project setup video, I touched on the fact that we'd add in all these types packages into our development dependencies. And what these types are is TypeScript type definitions for the various libraries that we've got in use in our project. And that enables TypeScript to understand what's available inside all of this third party code. The easiest way to see the value of these is to remove them from the project and see what happens. So I'm just gonna remove all of them and then rerun the installation process to get rid of them. And if I try and start up the server at this point, we'll see that we can't actually compile our TypeScript because TypeScript is just not aware of what all this third party code is trying to do. So if we don't have all these additional type definitions, we can either go through and define what each of the individual pieces of third party code are doing. And we'd only need to do that for the bits that we're actually using as far as I'm aware. But even so, it's still a massive amount of work and such a headache because of course you're most likely not aware what this third party code is doing. You're using it because it's helping you as like an abstraction that you can just sort of plug into. You don't really want to know the internal specifics of every library that you use, or at least I certainly don't. Now we could also cheat and we could allow TypeScript to compile with no implicit any set to false inside our tsconfig.json file, but I'm not a fan of that. Anyway, rather than go down that route, make sure to add in those types back into the project and run npm install again. And we should be back to a point where at least our server starts up. Now we're very fortunate as TypeScript users that most of the third party code out there, certainly the popular third party code, will more than likely have an existing type definition that you can pull down into your project and off you go. But for your own libraries, or for your own code, you do need to help TypeScript along if you want any of the benefits that TypeScript brings. So as a gentle introduction to TypeScript, what we're gonna do is we're gonna define an interface for our config object. And incidentally, this will flag a small potential problem that we otherwise may never have known about. So a convention in TypeScript is to define your interfaces starting with uppercase I. I believe this comes from the C sharp sort of background of TypeScript. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that's where it comes from. You can opt out of that if you wish, it's just convention. In our case, the iConfig or the configuration interface only has one property at the moment, and that's going to be the port. And at this stage, we expect that to be a number. We need to tell our configuration object that it should implement the iConfig interface. And to implement an interface in TypeScript, you just need to make sure that you've got all the properties that that interface has defined. In this case, as soon as we do implement that iConfig, TypeScript is going to report a problem with our port and that's that process env port could be a string or it could be a number. And we've explicitly stated on iConfig that port should most definitely be a number. Now a really sort of naive approach, but on the surface of it, a fair approach would be to try and parse the integer value out of whatever is set as our port environment variable. Now, being completely honest, what this has done here is prove a problem with my assumption. Now, I've assumed when writing this code, and perhaps for the longest of times, I'm not even sure how long I've thought this, but I've always assumed that the port value would just be a number. But it turns out that all environment variables seemingly should be a string. And we can prove this by looking inside the type definitions for the process object. Now what we're looking at here is quite a common signature inside TypeScript, which is called an index signature. Essentially process.env.whatever should be a key value pair where the key can be any string and the value can either be string or undefined. So there's various ways around this, but the simplest one to begin with is just to set the port to be a string. This is going to satisfy TypeScript as simply as possible. It maybe doesn't feel the nicest, but it's still going to work just fine. And as long as our interface is explicit about what this should be, we should be good. Now, because this then makes valid TypeScript code, our server should restart and we should be able to send in requests and responses again.